Okay, today we're going to make baguette, um, and it's a very simple recipe. It only includes four ingredients, uh, flour, salt, yeast, and water. And today we're using instant yeast, so it doesn't need to be activated in the warm water. It just needs to be dissolved quickly. So you want your water to be at a certain temperature, um, but if you don't want to pull out your thermometer, the temperature we're looking for is... Uh, warmer than you, like, so when you stick your finger in it, but not so hot that it stings. So you want to be able to hold your finger in it for, uh, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds without feeling a sting from the heat. So as long as you're in that temperature range, you're in a good spot, okay? So we're going to take our yeast first, and we're going to put it into the water. And we're just going to give that two seconds to just sort of dissolve. Uh, maybe give it a bit of a stir. And it doesn't take very long. So we're going to put that into the KitchenAid and let it do its thing. The beauty of instant yeast is that it happens actually really quite quickly. Um, if we were using quick active yeast, we would need to let it sit in the water until it foamed up again, just to make sure that it's active. And then if we were using fresh yeast, you can just add it directly to the flour. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add the liquid to our KitchenAid first, and then we're gonna add our flour. And you wanna be mindful to keep the salt away from direct contact with the yeast. So I'm always going to sort of layer. So liquid first, dry ingredients next, salt last. I'm gonna throw my flour in, and then my salt on top of that. And what we're going to do is we're just going to start very, very slowly. And what we want it to do is pick up all of the flour around the outside of the bowl. So just maybe on speed one or two of your machine, you want to let this mix for a minute. So you can see that the dough is starting to come away from the edge of the bowl um, and it's starting to gather a little bit in the middle. So what we're looking for at this point is that most of the dough is being, most of the flour is being picked up with the liquid and that it's um, not too wet or not too dry. So at this stage, just when it's starting to come together, I'm going to stop the machine and I'm going to give it a bit of a squeeze. And if it feels really dry, I'm going to add a little bit more water and in this case, I think I need a touch more. So I'm just going to grab some water. So I'm just going to add a touch more water just to make sure that it's not too dry. You want to do this in that first minute or two of mixing. You don't want to let this dough knead and then go back and try and add water later. Okay, so you want to make that decision pretty early on. If my dough was super sticky at this point, I would have added more flour. Water on a bread recipe is generally just a suggestion. It really depends on where you are, how humid the flour is, how humid the room is. Um, all of these factors will play into how much water your dough actually needs. So you can see my dough looks kind of sticky, but if you look closer, you can see it's still pretty stiff in the middle. So I'm not worried about it being too wet. I'm going to let this mix on speed one for another, let's say, minute, um, just to make sure that I'm at the right texture before I turn up the speed and start kneading. If it kind of looks like your dough isn't really moving all that well, you can turn off the machine and just flip the dough over, just to give it a bit of a flip, and that'll help it mix a little bit better. My dough is feeling pretty good, so I've turned it up to speed two. The softer your dough is, the easier it is to roll. So I'm pretty happy with that. What we're going to do is we're going to turn it up to speed two or three, and we're going to let it go for about eight minutes.
Okay, so it's been about five minutes and I wanna start by just checking the dough. So I'm gonna rip off a little piece and with clean fingers, it's important to try with clean fingers. You wanna sort of stretch the dough gently and see how much you can stretch it. And you wanna see how easily it tears. So you can see as I'm stretching it, it's ripping pretty easily. Um, although I'm getting a pretty good pull. Uh, but there is tearing and there's some pretty big holes. So what this means to me is that it's not quite ready yet. We're really looking for um, a little bit more mixing. So we're gonna let that go. So that's been mixing for about seven minutes now. So same thing, we wanna try and get a little piece off and just pull. So you can see this time when I pull it, I'm able to pull it a little bit better with a little less holes in it. So we're gonna let it go um, maybe another 30 or 45 seconds and then uh, we'll be done. Okay, so one final check. And pull one more. You can see that the dough is nice and smooth. It's pulled everything away from the edges of the bowl. And that this time, I'm able to stretch it really quite wide without it tearing. A little tearing is okay. Um, I'm going to post separately uh, a better image. What you wanna do is you wanna hold your dough up to the light so that you can see through it. And I'll show you the three stages of mixing in a separate file. Okay. So our dough is all mixed. The bowl is nice and clean. It's nice and smooth. It's not stiff. Um, we just generally have a really nice, soft, supple dough. So what you wanna do, is if it's a tiny bit sticky, just put a tiny bit of flour on your hands. Don't go crazy, like just a little bit. And then we wanna shape this into a ball by sort of grabbing from the sides and pinching to the back, okay? And you're gonna do that a couple times, but just gently, don't squeeze hard or it'll stick to you, okay? So just a couple of squeeze and fold to the back. Then this part, I'm gonna put straight down on the table and I'm gonna just give it a gentle roll. Okay, so we have a nice smooth ball of dough here. And you just wanna take a bowl and you wanna lightly oil it or spray it with some pan spray Okay, and pop your dough ball in there. If you shape your dough nice and smooth like this, it's going to have an easier time proofing and it's gonna proof a little bit more evenly. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a little bit of plastic. And cover up the bowl. You can do this with saran wrap or a plastic bag, whatever you've got. And then we're just gonna let it sit until it's about double in size. We'll come back to that one. 